name Marie Rossi, and I have an exhibit at Imago Gallery in Warren. Um, the exhibit is entitled Becomings, and it is in co-wax and oil. I titled the exhibit Becomings because it is very personal to me. It is about transformation and becoming something else. And each of the pieces represent a start from one point and then a transformation. They are abstract but figurative and represent sort of my life story, uh, starting off as a lawyer, then holistic counselor, then artist. So I thought people might be interested in getting a look at this gallery because I do work in several different media and I have stations set up for each of the different media that I work in. And right now, I'm standing in front of this station where I begin my coal wax pieces. So this is considered the play stage, and so I have lots of markers and pens and crayons uh, in order to start the beginning of those pieces. This is the second part of my um, coal wax station. It's where I mix my paint, and I start applying the paints here. I set up the pieces here like I have this white piece of paper would normally be filled with marks and as you'll see later on when I do a short demo um, and then I apply the paint as the piece is hanging on the wall. These are some of the tools that I use when I'm doing uh, working in coal wax. Um, there's all kinds of scrapers and uh, spatulas and one of my main tools are also uh, stencils. And as you can see here there are stencils both that are I bought at a store, and also all kinds of stencils that I've made myself. And then over here are some of the finished coal wax pieces, one piece which I'm actually going to have in the show. And these other pieces are, these are not really pieces, these are just cut up squares of canvas. Uh, and ever, whenever I have extra paint or I want to test the paint color um, in a, or a different kind of pattern in coal wax or different kind of mark, I take out these scraps of canvas and I apply different paint and different marks to them. My, my thinking is that at some point I'm going to put these squares together into some kind of weird kind of quilt and get my other artist friends to collaborate and do their own weird quilts and I mean weird squares and add it to that. This is uh, where I do my encaustic work. This is usually where I do the actual finishing part of the encaustic. This is an example of a really early piece of encaustic where I used um, hot wax and India ink. This is where I um, actually melt the hot wax and there's another video if you're interested also on my site which shows the whole process of encaustic painting. But this is where I do it and this is um, I set up these cans here so you can actually see that this is encaustic paint so that's easily to reach when I am uh, painting. So this is where I primarily do my oil painting and as you can see there are two larger canvases up. One is finished which is going into the new exhibit. Um, the other one I hope will be finished and will go into the new exhibit as well. Um, this is where I usually stand to mix my paints. I have over here an embarrassingly amount of paint because I always buy paint when I am uh, when it's on sale. So I had to create some system uh, so that I could see the paint and so I created this system where I hung the paints up by color. So I'm going to do a brief demonstration of uh, the coal wax, use of the coal wax medium. And what you see here is a piece of, uh, a section of Arches oil paper, which I've cut up and created three equal squares. Um, and the reason I do three equal squares is so that I can create a series. And there'll be similar elements in each one. Um, what you see is the yellow here is I added, I just painted on some yellow actually acrylic paint because you can always start with acrylic and then add the oil on top but you can't do the reverse. So this is the stage where they say just have fun. I don't, I just do it when I, a lot of times I just do it when I come in before I start actual oil painting and I just want to warm up and so I look at my, this is a place where I have pencils and crayons and um, inks and watercolors and um, decide what I feel like doing. What I have here in my hand is art graph um, water soluble charcoal and I love this stuff because I also like to start with black actually normally I don't start with a lot of colors but um, so this is I'll show you what it does I'm actually using uh, cooking oil here and you can just smudge it along and I use cooking oil to, to uh, clean up all the wax mess like from all my tools and stuff it works really well. 
Once we're done uh, with playing and you think you have sufficient mocks on there, there should be different size mocks, different shapes. Um, you can then move to the next stage. Cold wax medium is cold wax mixed with Gulkid gel. And the Gulkid gel is what helps the cold wax to harden and dry. And you, before you do anything with this play piece, this is definitely a play piece, <laughs> you need to use this medium on here so that it seals the underneath. It's like creating layers if you use Photoshop. This is the first layer and you put the cold wax on top in order to preserve that. And you put it as thin as you can. So I'm only going to do a very small section of this, but I would normally put it over the whole thing. So here I am taking, I've already mixed up the cold wax medium, and I'm just going to work with this middle section here. So you're applying this in any way you want, but you want a very thin layer of wax. And the reason you want to do this is that some of this is charcoal, some of this is crayon, and it comes off. So the, more, the initial layer of wax that you put down helps preserve this when you add more paint to it. And it doesn't mix with the paint and become muddy. So what you see here is oil paint and coal wax medium. I have not mixed them up. Um, once I mix them up, you do one to one. And so one pot to one pot. What I've done is create different values of three different colors, adding a gray. So we have blue, red, and yellow. I'm mixing two values of the same color. I'm going to apply this value to the painting. Because obviously we have to create something out of this and we're going to have to, by adding paint, we're going to be covering up some of these mocks. This is a spatula I bought specifically for uh, coal wax, um, but you can use any kind of spatula that has a sharp silicone spatula. And I'm going to apply this to an area that I think is kind of ugly, that I want to create some shape to it. Um, and I want to hide a lot of what's underneath. So I'm going to apply it here. And you can do, so you can see if I apply it thick, we'll cover up the whole area. And if I want to do something like this, create a shape in here, I can also create some texture. And so what I'm using for texture here is this other little nifty tool. And I can create something like this. I tend to use cold wax um, when I am uh, not seeking the translucency that hot wax has, but, and I, but I also want to do sculptural work on my piece. It also allows me to create layers very quickly, where straight oil paint um, takes a couple days to dry, where the coal wax, because it has the gulkite medium in it, dries very quickly. Um, so here you can see where I'm applying the paint very thickly, and the reason I'm applying it very thickly is because I'm going to do some kind of fun mock making with it. When you're doing um, hot wax, it, it solidifies really quickly and it becomes very hard, and it's not as movable as the cold wax. So here, I'm barely even touching it, and I can create any kind of marks that I want in the piece. And the variety of instruments you have will determine how many marks that you can make. So it's infinite. You can pick up kitchen utensils, you can pick up, these are sculpting tools, you can pick up all kinds of spatulas. So I'm taking something that's very uh, thick and create, making it thinner so that you can see what's underneath. Like I just said, you can use any kind of tool, including old clothes. So I have these boots that don't fit me anymore. And I looked at them, so I'm cutting them, and I looked at them and said, wow, what a pretty pattern. And so one of the other things you can do is take anything that has a pattern on it and create a stencil out of it. This is my boot, a cut, and I'm now going to apply paint to it. So let's see, what color paint do we think we have? How about we'll do a light color over that dark. So I have to mix the paint with the medium, 50-50. I'm putting the paint on the boot, and I think I might want two different colors. 
And again, this is still early stages. And then I'm going to take the boot and apply it to the painting. And you get a design. Here's where I uh, showed you where I had these squares of canvas that I used my extra paint on. So now I know I'm not going to use this anymore, at least for a while, it is going to be dried up by the time I go back into that other painting. So I am going to just lay down here so that I use Don't Waste the Paint. These are uh, four finished co-wax pieces. They will be in the exhibit uh, called uh, Becomings at Imago Gallery. Uh, the rest of the pieces that I have at the exhibit will also be co-wax and oil, or there'll be a couple uh, oil pieces. Oftentimes people ask me why I would do encaustic or why I would do co-wax or do straight oil. And as my teacher told me, and which I told other students, um, is that you use whatever media will convey the thought or the process that you want to convey. And so I use encaustic often when I want that translucency. I want that feeling of looking through things. And um, I use coal wax when I'm using um, layers as well, but more opaque layers and more texture. Um, it does not, coal wax does not have the translucency of encaustic, but it has much more moldability. Today I was showing you some of my co-wax and oil pieces and doing a little demo of the co use, use of the co-wax medium. Um, from here, um, I intend to continue doing co-wax and oil um, and some, some straight oil paintings um, on what I'm going to call my Africa exhibit. I just came back from three weeks in uh, Kenya and I was inspired by the colors and the people um, of Kenya and that's what my focus will be in my next exhibit.